The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave unto us. He gave us his only son. He gave unto you and I. So why do we want to live in poverty? Why the Lord have opened the doors open his heart and make it clear to us that the only way we can go forward in life is to give. Can I hear you tell you about the only way you can go forward in life is to give. So my message is simple. Generosity. Generosity brings us close to God. Generosity brings us close. I want to emphasize on it again, giving. The Bible made us to understand that the Father give unto us and uh, he expects us to give back. You are expected to give. When you begin to give, that is when you overcome the enemies. When you give, you overcome the enemies. Can I hear you say, when I give, when I, give I, overcome I overcome every enemy of my life. Do you know number one enemy of your life is who? Huh? Satan, isn't it? Because you are his number one enemy. Therefore, your number one enemy is Satan, not the one you are looking at, not the man you see. And when you are not prospering, sometimes we blame brothers, blame sisters, blame one another, but the person behind is a Satan. And how does Satan come into it? Satan makes you to withhold. Satan wants to make sure that you don't give. Remember, when you go to the Bible, the Bible says, For God so loved the world that he did what? He gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave unto us. He gave us his only son. He gave unto you and I. So why do we want to live in poverty? Why the Lord have opened the doors, opened his heart, and make it clear to us that the only way we can go forward in life is to give. Can I hear you tell you about the only way you can go forward in life is to give. So my message is simple. Generosity. Generosity brings us close to God. Generosity brings us close to God. When you stop giving, you start dying. When you stop giving, you start dying. So it is a must that you give. It is a must that you give. The Bible says, he that saw it today, expect to harvest tomorrow, isn't it? If you don't sow, how do you harvest? It's a very simple logic. It's a simple analogy. If you don't sow, if you don't plant, can you harvest? Okay. If you, are, if you don't have money in your pocket, and you don't have Edgar's card. Can you go to Edgar's to take anything? No, you can go. You can go. When you go there and take something, what is going to happen to you? First, you receive shambo. Then after that, arrest. That is it. There is no way in life you cannot plant. So how do we do that? God, in this Christmas, we are celebrating. We are celebrating the birth 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? We're celebrating the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. God gave us. John 3, 16. Say, for God so loved the world that he gave. For God so loved the world that he gave. He gave us. He gave us. Present tense, he gave us. Past tense, he gave us. Continuous sense, giving unto us. Hallelujah. He gave us. So learn to give. More especially at this time of celebration. So, you know, we are celebrating the gift of God unto us, isn't it? Aren't you going to be happy when people celebrate the gift, your gift unto them? Aren't you going to be happy? You'll be very happy when people are celebrating your gift unto them. Just look at, look at it. Balance it. We are celebrating the gift of God unto us. How are men going to celebrate your gift unto them? How? Praise the Lord. So, learn to study the word of God. And always examine things in the sight of God. God gave. What have you given? He gave you. He gave unto you. What have you given? You are celebrating the gift of God. How are we going to celebrate your gift? You don't give to those around you only. You don't give to Christians only. You don't give to Muslims only. You give to everyone. Because he said, okay, I'm a Christian. I can never give to a Muslim. Have you under, haven't you read in the Bible that it's the same God, the same Abraham, who is the father of Ishmael and the father of who? Isaac. Do you see how God makes things? He balances things so that tomorrow you don't go blaming him. <laughs> he balances it. He said for you life and death. He said choose. He said for us sin and righteousness. He said choose. It's like, he, oh, he also said for us, prayer and no prayer. <laughs> you can pray. You might decide to pray. You might decide not to pray. It's all up to, you can pray standing up. You can pray kneeling down. The choice is yours. So he has simplified life we live. He has simplified life we live. So it is important for us to, Understand what the Lord has made clear to us and lean on it. And do what? Lean on it. Depend on it. Eat it. Live it. Praise the Lord. For God so loved the world. For God so loved me that he gave me his son. For God so loved you that he gave you his son. So you, what have you given? What have you given? Men should celebrate what you give. Men should celebrate what you, you give. Have you given people pain? Think about it. Have you given pain to others? Have you given joy to others? Have you given laughter to others? Praise the Lord. So what you give is very important. So I wanted to go back home today and give. So as I go back today, I give. And surely, I will give before the end of this year, 2021. And 2022, I will continue to give. Because the more I give, the more I enrich myself, and the more I preserve myself, because if you don't give, you are in trouble. If we don't give, we are in trouble. God has already made it clear to us. There are people that are giving too. You know, you know what they give? 
They take a gun, they go killing people. They're giving to who they love. You know who they love? Satan. Because the work of Satan is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. So they're giving unto him. And what do you think will be their end? He that kill shall be, not even shall. I think using the word shall is not the right adjective to qualify it. Must kill. <laughs> yes. The word shall is not the right adjective for it. It is must. It must be killed. It's clear to us. Hello? It's clear to us. Remember, the Bible made it clear to us that Elijah will come before the Messiah come. Is that not what the Bible said? It said, Elijah will surely come back before the Messiah come. Did Elijah come back? Who is he? What happened to him? Eh? Have you, do you read the Bible? What did Elijah did? He ran. He ran to your house. Eh? What was the major thing Elijah is remembered for? <laughs> what is the major thing Elijah must be remembered for all the days of our life when you read the Bible? Jezebel, ne? Jezebel. <laughs> you know why he's saying Jezebel, Jezebel? Because he... he, he He's afraid of woman. <laughs> He's afraid of woman. If you ask him to give us the story between him and a woman today, he will have many to tell us. Maybe we're not going to close today to go and eat our Christmas rice. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> he said he will, whenever he opens his eyes or opens his heart, he remembers Elijah. He will remember Jezebel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> so, say, what are you going to remember Elijah for? Jezebel. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will remember Elijah for killing <laughs> the prophet of Baals. <laughs> I will remember Elijah for killing the prophet of Baal. And I want you to always remember Elijah for killing the, the prophet of And again, remember him also for Jezebel. <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know, after killing those people, that was, that was why when he came back, he was killed. Have you ever read it in your Bible? Remember at the transfiguration, our Lord Jesus Christ himself with who? Moses and who? And uh, you know why he showed himself that way? These are the three that never die. They went to heaven. They never died. They went to heaven. Do you now remember also Moses? Why God said to Moses, you, you must never build a house for me? Why? Why did God say to Moses, you must never build a house for me? Because of what? Because of what? Eh? Because his hands was full of blood. He has a blood in his hand. That's why killing is very dangerous. Be careful. Killing is very dangerous. Because when you kill, you come back. Surely, you'll be killed. There's no two ways about it. 
you cannot escape it. For you to now, anyway, that's not a message of today. Let me not delay you. I, I need to find time to, ex, to explain this to each and every one of us. We must get an understanding of this because it's very important. It's very, very important for each and every one of us to know this. Because you read the Bible, but sometimes we don't understand what the Bible says. Praise the Lord. Today we are talking about giving. But when we talk about giving, it draws us to that message we are trying to go through, which is not the message of today. The message of today, give. Because it is the generosity. You are giving life that brings you to God. Because it's only when we give that God gives unto us. So when you give, praise the Lord, when you give, God gave you more. So learn to give. That's my message. Learn to give. In 2 Corinthians chapter 9. Oh, just leave it, just leave it, just leave it. There's no need, there's no need. Just quickly go to uh, Genesis chapter 29, verse 14. Because of time. Genesis 29, 14. Are you there? Yeah, what does it say? Genesis 29, verse 14. Mm. And Laban said to him, mm -hmm. Surely you are my bone and my flesh. Mm -hmm. And he stayed with him for a month. Mm -hmm. Then Laban said to Jacob, You are my what? You are my relative. Should you That's it. You are my relative. He said, You are my relative. So everyone in this life, you see, here, they are your relatives. They are your relatives. When you give unto them, it's very good. But it's important you give also to those that are not your relatives. You give unto your brothers that are close to you, your relatives, your close ones. It's also important for you to give to others that are not your relatives. Praise the Lord. When you give to your relatives, you know your relatives, surely you are my born. You are my brothers and sisters. Praise the Lord. You are my brothers and sisters and I will give to you. But what about others outside? Who are not your relatives? When you don't give them, you are in trouble. So learn to give your relatives and remember to give to others who are not your relatives. Read it again. Genesis 29, 14. And Laban said to him, mm -hmm. Surely you are my bone and my flesh. Mm -hmm. And he stayed with him for a month. Thank you. He accommodated him. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, he gave an illustration about a man that is traveling. He said, a priest saw him on the road and did what? Ignore him. Another one who is a righteous man saw him and ignore him. Then the one that is considered to be, to be nobody saw him and did what? And took him to, took him in and took care of him and gave his money and said, treat him. And when he come back, Whatever expenses, extra expenses met on his head, I'm going to pay. He said, who is his neighbor? Among the three people, who is his neighbor? Then the little boy said, the little girl said, is the one who has, who has mercy on, on him. He said, who among them is his neighbor? Is that one. Is that one? Praise the Lord. So it is time for us to reconsider the life we live, how we give, because our giving life is very important. Our giving life is very important. Very, very important. And it goes also to second, uh, First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14 as well. Our giving life is very important.
Are you there? First Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14. Mm. But who am I and who are my people mm -hmm. that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? That we should be able to offer who am I and who are my people? Who are your people today? Everyone. Everyone is your people. A white man is your people and a black man is your people. Whether it's a Chinese, a red India, or from wherever, it's your people. That's the life God wants us to live. He said, for God so loved the world that he gave. The world means comprises of everyone. There's no race, there's no tribe, there's no language. The world. For God so loved the world that he gave. Praise the Lord. And that's why Deuteronomy 28 verse 8 said, And thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth you what? Power to do what? To get wealth. It is Lord that gives you. So without his power, you cannot get what? Get wealth without his power. So he expects you to give because he has given to you. Praise the Lord. Is that not what the Bible said? Hmm? Can you read for us that place? 818. Deuteronomy verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. And you shall remember, the Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, for you shall remember the Lord your God for it is he that gives you what? Power to do what? To get wealth. And Deuteronomy 28, verse 8, say what? Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. It said, The Lord shall command the blessings upon thee in thy storehouse and on all that thou set thy hands unto, and he shall bless thee in the land which the Lord thy God has given unto you. He shall do what? He shall bless thee. He shall bless thee. So the Lord's blessings has to be upon you. If you look at the book of Job, you realize that Job was so blessed. Job was so rich that Satan couldn't attack him. Job was so rich, so wealthy. And Satan was murmuring, hello, Satan was what? So when you are rich, you are in trouble. Because Satan is not happy. He doesn't want you to get rich. And that is why you have to remember the Lord your God. And according to that, 818 of Deuteronomy. And once you are able to remember him who give you, you have to do what? You have to give to others. Can you read that 818 again? Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. And you shall remember the Lord your God. And you shall remember the Lord your God for? For it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. The power to get wealth. Then go to Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. Deuteronomy 28, verse 8. The Lord will command the blessing and on the you. And the Lord will command the blessings to do what? In your storehouses. In your storehouses, yes. And in all to which you set your hand. In all. Can I hear you say, in all things. In, all things. in whatsoever in you set your hands to do. Everything you set your hands to do, the Lord will do what? Will bless you. But that only comes to pass when you give. That only comes to pass when you, when you give. If you look at Psalm, 20, Psalm 41 verse 1. Psalm 41 verse 1. But when, you are, when you are wealthy, when you are wealthy, Satan is very sad. Satan is very sad. Because giving makes you an upright. An uprightness. Giving brings to the platform of the uprightness with God. That's why he commanded you to give. How do we celebrate Christmas? What is the celebration of Christmas? To remember Christ. 
And who is Christ? The gift of God unto us. So if it, we are celebrating the gift of God unto us, means we also have to gift unto, unto others so that others can celebrate our gift unto them. I, I, I don't know if you understand this. It's just a very simple logic, a simple analogy. Simple, very simple to understand. We're celebrating Christmas, the gift of God, and others have to celebrate your gift upon them. So that is why when you give, you are blessing yourself. You are bringing blessings to, your, to yourself. Say, when I give, I am bringing blessings to myself. Touch yourself, say, to myself. Generosity is what brings you close to God. Giving. So you have to be generous. Tell yourself, I must be generous. I must be generous. Say it a minute. Say, I must be generous. I must be generous. Whether I like it or not, I, like I must be generous. Must Look at that Psalm 40 verse 1. Let's, Let's see who considered the poor, Yes. Blessed is he who considers the poor. Uh -huh. The Lord will deliver him. Do you hear that? The Lord will deliver him. So when you consider the poor, what do you, what do you mean by considering the poor? Giving. Remember what he said in Matthew chapter 4, Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are they poor. For theirs is what? Ah. You never read it in your Bible? Please go to Matthew chapter 5. Verse, verse, go to Matthew chapter 5. Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are they. For theirs is what? For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. There you are. The poor in spirit. And then verse, 40, verse 1 of chapter 41 of the book of Psalms. Say that. Say what? Blessed are those who consider the, the poor. When you look at how the scripture moves, you know there's something very important. Psalm 37, verse number 25. Psalm 37, verse 25. I've been young and now am old, uh -huh. yet I have not seen the righteous. I have never seen the righteous for a second. No. He said, do what? Begging bread. You know, there was a song, there is a song that says, since I was young and now I am getting old. Oh, so you know it. Since I was young and now I am old, I never, never see Lord change it. He doesn't change. It doesn't change. He remains the same. That's why the other songs say, unchangeable God, unchangeable God, unquestionable God, unchangeable God. He does not change. See, I am the Lord, I change it not. Is that what he said? Malachi chapter 3. <laughs> Malachi chapter 3. I change not. You want me to change? He said, bring it to my storehouse that there may be meat. And test me if I will not open the windows of heaven and release the blessing that your house may not have room enough to contain what I will give unto you. And I will cause the devourers to cease in your life. I will do what? Devourers to cease in your life. Say generosity. generosity. Which once you began to give, Devourer sees in your life. But when you don't give, you open doors for devourers. I am telling you this. That's what, if you look at Job 1, you realize Satan was about to finish Job. He tried everything, he couldn't penetrate Job. Why? Because Job gives. Immediately after Job's children finished eating, 
Job goes to kneel down to thank God for their food and give unto God a sacrifice. And give unto God who? He give unto God something big. A great sacrifice. He give unto God. So when you go through all these scriptures, you come to understand that when you don't give, you bring problem to yourself. Stand on your feet. Go ahead and say, Father, grant me grace to give. It's only those that give that stands before you and declare you as their father. Father, may I be counted among them. May I be numbered among those who give. Go ahead and pray. Go ahead and pray. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we pray. Can I hear you say amen? amen? It is done. Go and act on what you've heard. And the Lord bless you. Go and act on what you have heard. And the Lord bless you. I repeat, go and act on what you have heard. On what you've received. And may the Lord bless you. As you are crossing over into the year 2022, please act on this word of today because that is what brings you close to the Father. Nothing else brings you close to God than giving. Giving brings you close to God. If you look at the book of Matthew, you realize that God the angels come to, to Mary and said, you have been remembered and chosen among the women. Among the women that God gave you, the Holy Spirit is here, you conceive. And when you conceive, you give birth to a, a child who has come to serve the world, to introduce God in physical, in its human form unto man. To introduce God in his, in his human form unto men. Please remember that word. The Lord bless you.